Hello and welcome with uh, the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Uh, today we are continuing our Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. We're doing chapter 2, looking at the prophetic ministry as it operates through a prophet. How God may use an individual in his kingdom who has been birthed in his kingdom. In the Old Testament, there were specific prophets that he used. And today he just uses whomever he pleases to use, whoever, whoever has his spear. Because, as again, as I've talked about on this channel, each individual that comes into the kingdom of God, okay, that is converted by the power of the Holy Spirit, or who has been enlightened to the fact that they were birthed into the kingdom uh, before they even came to earth, they're all, we're all prophets, okay? So God will use an individual however he wants to use that individual in the earth. So he may use an individual in the prophet ministry. The same ministries that we're going to go over as we take a look at the prophetic ministry, which will be Jeremiah, Hosea, Isaiah, and the book of Ezekiel. Today's Bible study is chapter 2 in the book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah has been sent to the house of Judah, the children of Israel, sent to uh, explain to them that God is going to be coming in with judgment against them because of their wickedness and the fact that they have forgotten who he was and that he was their God. So chapter two says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou went after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. So this is what Jeremiah, uh, God says to Jeremiah, tell them, I remember all of the good things. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. That whenever any, they were being devoured, God was offended and he would come forth with his wrath. He says, evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. He says, hear ye the word of the Lord. O you house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. So see how that is pertaining to all the children of Israel. Okay, Jacob, we know that his name was changed to Israel. He goes into verse 5. He says, thus says the Lord. Now, this is what the Lord says to Jeremiah, to go forth to them and say, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts, of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death? Through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. He's saying, why haven't they called upon me? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered in, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. Now that's what he's saying they did to him. Once he put them in this good position with them, with him, they began to defile the land. He said, the priest said, where is the, said not, okay, he's saying the priest did not ask, where is the Lord, or call upon the Lord. He said, the priest said not, where is the Lord, and they that handled the law knew me not. They don't even have a relationship with me. They didn't call upon me for anything, he says. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets, they prophesied by Baal, by a whole nother God. They said what that God was telling them to say, and they walked after things that do not profit them, okay? Now, that's what the Lord had told Jeremiah to go before his people, those that he had chosen in the Old Testament, children of Israel, his first inherited, the first apples of his eyes, <laughs> because they had began to uh, walk in rebellion against him. They forgot all about him, and they began to serve Baal, another God, okay? He says, wherefore, I will... Yet plead with you, says the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Have nation changed, he says, have a nation changed their gods? Now he's saying this to the children of Israel, which are yet no gods, because they began to worship Baal. And Baal was not really a god, but he was what they considered to be a god, and they whatever doctrine applied to Baal, they had began to use that doctrine among themselves and whatever structure Baal had set up, they began to structure themselves under that hand of Baal. And he says, but my people, they have changed their glory for which that which does not profit. 
So he said, be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they have cut them out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold no water. So see, they have forsake, forsaken God. They had began to serve the God that they wanted to serve in that particular land. And it may have been the, uh, the God that was in that land at that time. As we begin to read, we'll see. And it is. Okay. But verse 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yield and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Now listen to what he's saying about Israel because they have forsaken him. He said, also the children of Noth and the Tehophans, they have broken the crown of, their, of thy head. Has thou not procured this unto thyself, and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, when he led you by the way, he says? And now what hast thou to do in the, in the way of Egypt, to drink the waters of Seor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, to drink the waters of the river? They had began to drink of another water, is basically what he's saying, instead of the fountain of living waters, which is him. Hallelujah. He says, thine own wickedness shall correct you and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Look at this. Verse 19, their own wickedness, what they were doing wickedly shall correct them and their own backsliding shall reprove them, shall correct them also. So it says, know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. So they had no fear of God because they had begun to serve this other God. They were not even considering the words that uh, Moses had given them when they were first coming out of bondage. Okay, just like with us today, some people, they've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and they've forgotten all about their first love and the first words that God spoke to them. He says, for of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest and played the harlot, yet I had planted you a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou now turned unto, a, he calls them a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me, he says. Now this is, again, God's word to uh, Jeremiah because he's in the prophetic ministry and he's getting ready to go forward to say these things to the children of Israel because God is mad. They have forsaken him and they began to serve another God. He says, for thou art washed with nitre and take thee much soap. He had washed them and with much soap, he says, and with nitre, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. So how can thou say I am not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift domagery tra traversing her ways. I mean, these are some harsh words that he began to speak against them because he was mad. He was angry. He said, a wild ass, he called them, used in the wilderness that snuffed up the wind at her pleasure. And her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves in her mouth or in her month they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidest, there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. Now see, again, this is the heart of God. And this is Jeremiah, God telling Jeremiah to go forth and tell his children, children of Israel, the apple of his eye at one point in time, that this is how his heart feels today in reference to them forsaking him. He says, as a thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face, but in the time of their trouble, they will say, arise and save us. So he said, even though they have turned their back, they're no longer worshiping me. They're no longer hearing my words. But now they want to turn to him, turn to the almighty God and ask him to arise and save them. But where are thy gods? God is saying he's going to say to them and uh, the gods that wrote that thou has made you. 
let them arise if they can save you in the time of thy trouble for according to the number of the cities that's how many gods you have O judah so he's telling them count on your guys call on them and see if they can save see if they will arise like i would arise and save you like i arose and saved you from out of the hands of pharaoh he says wherefore will you leave me you are all transgressed you have all transgressed against me says the lord in vain have i smitten your children they receive no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. And then he goes on to say, O generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say, my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto you. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Again, he's going on. I mean, he is going off because he is very angry. They have forsaken God and they had begun to serve these other gods. He says, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by stretch, by secret search, but upon all these. But yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Now, this is what God is saying, because they feel like, you know, God had chosen them to be the apple of his eye. But even though they were not worshiping him, even though they were not still considering his words, even though they were not listening to his doctrine, he says, now you want to say that because all of that, I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. He says, behold, I will plead with thee because thou sayest, I have, I have not sinned. Verse 36, why gettest thou about so much to challenge thy way? For thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt as thou was ashamed of Assyria. And verse 37 says, yes, thou shalt go forth from him and thy hands upon thy head. For the Lord has rejected thy confidences and thou shalt not prosper in them. So see, God had began to reject the children of Israel because he, they rejected him as a God. So therefore, he rejected them as it is today. Those that reject the Heavenly Father, those that do not consider him the God of the heavens and the earth, those that will not believe upon uh, Jesus Christ as being the Savior sent from heaven, sent from the throne room to be a, a mediator for peace between man and God. God is saying also he would reject them also. Because again, if you think about it like this, how can he be your God if you don't want him to be your God? He's still going to be God, okay? So either way, as I've said many times on this uh, particular platform, Feed My Sheep Foundation Ministries, if you accept God or if you don't accept God, he's still the God who reigns and rules over the heavens and the earth. So you can either accept him as your God the original creator of heaven and earth and man, or you cannot, but nevertheless, you're still in his hands. He has the whole world in his hands. Hallelujah. All right. So God bless you. God be with you. That was uh, Jeremiah chapter two, as we take a look at the prophetic ministries going forward in the books of Jeremiah, Isaiah, um, Ezekiel, and Hosea. All right, God be with you. I will see you next on our next video.